We took the original concept from the pioneers who lived in the Appalachian Mountains. They lived on subsistence farms that had buildings around the main house that supported the main farmhouse. Those buildings were things like smokehouses, barns, things like that. We took the idea and made it into our outbuilding modules, and those outbuildings create energy, which now power the main home. The concept has been integrated into every aspect of the design of this home. Um, you can see this within the massing of the house. It's a, essentially a compound of buildings. Uh, it can also be seen in all the materials that we've used as well as the detailing of the home. And, and the overall experience, I think, reinforces this notion of homesteading. The team tried to use a lot of uh, conventional systems within the house. We used a lot of very affordable, very um, vernacular materials such as steel, um, wood siding, things that everyone uses on every farm. While there are some things that are very unique to the area and unique to the house that are built in, there's a lot of things that can be found off the shelf uh, and they're readily available and that helps us to make a more affordable home. We really wanted to integrate our technology into the architecture. And that's happened in every aspect of the building. We really wanted to make sure that, um, especially with our solar panels, that they were actually integrated into the architecture and not just attached to a roof. We have the, the great porch, which is covered with a bifacial canopy. It's something that you experience from underneath, but it also produces energy. The solar thermal skylight is uh, located right over our core. So that all our hot water is, is created right above where we need it, which is our bathroom and our, and our kitchen. We actually let light through that skylight so that we have natural light coming into our bathroom and the hallways leading up to our bathrooms. And another really interesting one is the tram wall, which is often tram walls of the past were kind of a very solid wall that you wouldn't really necessarily want in your living room. We created one using phase change materials that actually lets light in. You can get a view through it and uh, it will help to uh, modulate the temperatures of the home. We wanted to make something for the average homeowner and the average contractor to be able to build. Part of that is because it goes back to the same concept of homesteading. Um, they would have built things out of what they had available, out of technologies that they already knew. So one of the ways we dealt with that was doing staggered stone framing, which is a really great way to increase your R value, but it's also a way that anybody can build at home. To close the thermal envelope, we used rigid insulation on the exterior to give us a nice, tight thermal envelope. We really wanted to have at least a two-bedroom house. We feel, felt like a one-bedroom house is not realistic for the way Americans live. That's more like an apartment, not a house. This house can transform in a lot of different ways. The main place that this happens is in the flexible living dining kitchen area. We have a projection screen that covers the kitchen and creates an amazing home theater. We also have a really exciting bay window which helps to make that space feel more open and link it to our garden. The students did a great job pushing people outside. There's a lot of outdoor living space that can be used to extend the small interior spaces. And we also have a private porch off of our uh, bedrooms, which is for more intimate kind of reading, quiet activities. The Solar Homestead embodies its concept from start to finish. You can see it through the overall forms, you can see it through the materials. We are probably one of the only ones that have pushed our concept all the way to the end of modernized um, homesteading. I think carrying that concept, that important concept of independence, ingenuity, that's what makes us stand out from all the rest.